to this new edition of our holographic podcast or holochat and today i have with me arturo machuca uh, director of spaceport ellington can you hear that spaceport yes we have a spaceport here in houston arturo welcome hey fernando it's a pleasure to be here with you thank you so much for having me in this this exciting interview the pleasure is all mine so Arturo, thank you so much for being here. Tell me, first of all, what is a spaceport? Well, Fernando, uh, a spaceport, yeah, just like the name implies, right, is, is, is that access to space. Uh, in the case of Houston Spaceport, uh, I like to say that we're a very unique uh, spaceport that is uh, uh, creating the system, the ecosystem that will uh, support commercial spaceflight as we see companies uh, improving and getting their programs and their spacecraft, uh, spacecraft ready for, for uh, flight. We uh, have uh, been able to advance the Houston spaceport in ways in which um, we have been able to create uh, all the, those activities that allow you know, our commercial spaceflight companies to, to get their business going. Uh, that's fascinating. So the audience will be asking like, why do we need a spaceport? Is it just only for spaceships? Are we going to space? Is that for suborbital flights? Can you help us to answer that? Well, uh, I think uh, you could, you could uh, start from that premise uh, thinking, well, a, a spaceport is only uh, meant to support uh, flight activity. But um, that's not the case. It's like if you were to think that an airport exists just to um, support uh, the airplanes flying in and out of an airport. Really, what you do with both airport and the spaceport, you really have an effect in the life of us, the people, the people of this planet, right? Having this, this infrastructure uh, allows uh, people to be connected, allows, allows uh, in the case of the spaceport, it allows us to to send people to space to advance uh i guess uh, our our uh, knowledge of what is going on what is possible in in the space what type of uh you know what type of technologies what type of business can be created in space that's a um that you know, there's having a space for is a lot more than just you know just a piece of infrastructure you gotta you gotta look at it uh it has an effect in everybody's life right i can imagine that so what is included in a spaceport are we talking about companies are we talking about educational institutions are we talking about spaceships what what is included in this package of a spaceport because this is a very new term, at least for us, for most of us. All of the above, pretty much all, all that those um, I, I get different entities that you you mentioned are part of the spaceport. Uh, obviously, we begin with uh, that basic infrastructure that is necessary for commercial spaceflight. The case of the Houston spaceport is uh, we are licensed to operate as a horizontal takeoff and landing spaceport, and so we are. Uh, created with uh, runway infrastructures, that, uh, infrastructure that supports uh, companies like Virgin Galactic to be able to to take off and come back and land. But again, you know, in our case, we are doing a lot more than just uh, supporting commercial spaceflight and 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 the operational means. We have also uh, been able to uh, create infrastructure where we are housing companies like. Uh, uh, Collins Aerospace, Intuitive Machines, Axiom Space, Venus Aerospace. These are companies that are uh, today uh, working on uh, creating the necessary elements to be able to access space. And I'm talking about uh, the construction of the, the new generation of uh, astronaut suits. I'm talking about the new commercial space station that is being created by Axiom Space. I'm talking about uh, lunar landers uh, built by companies like Intuitive Machines that are, um, you know, by the way, just about to take flight. Hopefully, uh, the first uh, half of February, you're going to see uh, in the news 
uh, intuitive machines uh, sending uh, their Nova C lunar lander uh, to the moon. If they're uh, successful, when they are successful, whenever they com complete it, they will become the first uh, American uh, spacecraft. They will deliver the first American spacecraft uh, on the, you know, to to land on the moon. So, so you know, this is this is the kind of activity that is taking place now. As I was mentioning this to you, uh, Fernando, I think it's very important to say that all these activities that um, that I was describing do have a direct impact in the people, not just the people of Houston, but the people of Texas, the people of the U.S., the people of the world. Really, uh, you know, this these companies and the technology that they're developing, it's uh, you know, is geared to to service everybody uh, at the local level. Of course, uh, we benefit from the jobs, from the economic activity that that is generated from uh, their their the impulse that these companies have taken here in Houston at the Houston Spaceport. Wow, that's uh, fascinating. So you are already in space. So essentially, space technology is in construction right now here at this facility in this spaceport that I believe in a month from now ish, maybe less than that, is going to be on the moon. That is fascinating and. Um, I was talking with you, um, I believe we had a conversation in 2015 when you just received a certification or license for a spaceport, but help, me to, or help us to understand what was your path, because in six years you went from just having a piece of paper like I have a license, or if it's that's correct, to, to operations that will be on the moon next month what can you please describe what was your path and your vision from this spaceport of course and and thank you fernando you you make a great point um we have uh, we have that i guess uh, been the recipient of uh, what i um think you know, you know it's uh, uh nothing but the perfect storm right the houston spaceport uh is fortunate enough to uh, to become licensed in, in 2015 uh, that was a time in which, uh, and in general, the, you know, uh, the, we knew that the effort to commercialize space was was on the way, right? But but we still did not have did not have that uh, I guess uh, detonator that would would uh, I, I guess uh, turn the valve, you know, where the I, I guess all that fuel that you see going on now through the industry, uh, I guess, was present. Whenever in, back in 2019, whenever the federal government uh, came up again with that directive of landing an astronaut, an American astronaut on the moon uh, by 2025, whenever th that that decision was made, you saw the companies and uh, you know across the industry just you know jumping at uh, of joy, right? Due to this new directive, and and uh, you saw that movement and uh, the need for companies to uh, develop their infrastructure again to be able to create their assets to service uh, the the needs of uh, ins uh, institutions like uh, NASA, uh, uh, all the different I guess the different uh, uh, space uh, agencies of the world, right? And that's what we are seeing today. Uh, these companies that we have based uh, at the Houston Spaceport are uh, a clear example of what's going on, not just in Houston, but all over the U.S., all over the world, right? This, these companies are uh, using their talent, they're using their resources to service uh, governments of the world, to service people of the world. Uh, today, as we are having this conversation, you know, Axiom 3, uh, it's... Uh, 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 I guess uh, going through their experience at uh, the International Space Station, they uh, took off just three or four days ago, and uh, these are you know these are individuals again that are connected with government. Uh, some are private, and and again everybody is you know is, is uh, 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 reaping reaping the benefits of what what's going on today in the aerospace industry. Wow! So. For the audience, Axiom is building or is in the process of building the first 
commercial space station. In tuning machines, literally they, are, they have their own, their own moon lander. Uh, and you have companies here like Venus, Aerospace, building that, which could be the future of space propulsion. But also you have another factor that uh, it's important. Uh, travel point to point. So essentially, can I really see in the future me taking a flight, a suborbital flight from Houston to France or Houston to Tokyo, uh, like having a suborbital flight, so instead of me traveling for 8, 10, 14 hours, I'll be there just in a couple of hours. Is that doable and it's possible that Let's say, let's say for example, Virgin Galactic having a company uh, launching a suborbital flight, they can land here at the space probe Ellington. Is that part of the plan and is that doable? Yes, I have no doubt that that is the feature that, that we have here in Houston and, and around the world. Uh, we will be able one day uh, to travel from point to point uh, on Earth uh, at speeds that today we, we can even think about, right? Uh, you, you have companies usually described like Virgin Galactic that have uh, been successful in achieving uh, suborbital flight. Uh, they are working, they're working on, on expanding their technology to one, one day be able to fly from places like Houston to Tokyo, right? In, in a fraction of the time that we take today. Today, we spend, what, 14 hours to, to uh, get overseas here. Uh, you know, with uh, this technology, the, the goal would be to reduce the uh, traveling time to possibly under two hours. This is this is really amazing, and this is very possible. This technology, like I said, is is uh, being developed. It's not easy. It's uh, it, it's it's uh, you know, I guess it takes a lot of work, and and the companies are pushing hard to to make this happen now. In the case of the Houston spaceport, if it, it, one one piece of information that I want to share with you also is is besides uh, uh, space flight, we are also uh, making a push to. To, uh, with companies like Venus Aerospace, which is a, a very successful startup that we have at the Houston Space, we're working on hypersonic technology. This uh, uh, company is uh, their logo, by the way, or their you know, their tagline is uh, "Back uh, home in time for dinner," because uh, what their envision is being able to fly their uh, their uh, their planes uh, at uh, Mach nine, which is nine times the the speed of sound, right? Um, again, you know, making it possible for people to fly from one point on Earth to the other at a fraction of the time, uh, you know, that that um, and takes today, right? That is great. So also, as I remember, we talk about established companies, but also you have like a startup hub here, something happening also to help other companies. Can you please elaborate on that, please? It'll be my pleasure. Uh, the Houston Spaceport uh, has um, a very, very clear mission. Uh, we are here to uh, support commercial spaceflight, but the mission and the way in which we're going to do it is by uh, building a cluster of aviation and aerospace companies that will help us uh, uh, while we transition from what used to be a solely uh, federal program into a commercial, commercially driven program, right? Uh, this is uh, this is uh, taking place, and uh, part of the program that we have is it's not only connected to to large or mid-sized companies, but it's one that that uh, is geared to support. Uh, commercial space uh, st uh, startup companies. Uh, what we have done is um, right at the facility where Collins Aerospace has uh, their um, their uh, their uh, facility at the Houston Spaceport. We have reserved a 10,000 square foot uh, building where we will be opening an innovation and accelerator space where. Uh, we will allow for uh, startup companies, for individuals, for ideas to uh, come together and you know and and uh, uh, be based at to you know to turn what the dreams of uh, individuals or small companies into reality. Uh, this uh, this place is being uh, built as we speak. The name of this facility is Distill, 
and it'll be operated by a Houston-based company by the name of Stellar Access. Something that I um, I really appreciate is your long-term vision for this uh, spaceport. What um, what's your vision? So people watching this holographic podcast because it's one of the first will be watching this tomorrow, but they also will be watching this in 10, 20, 30 years from now as one of the first uh, holographic podcasts, and especially one that happened in one of the first spaceports in America. What, how do you see this spaceport, spaceport in 20 or 30 years from now? Okay, well, let me, let me begin by saying the vision that we have had as we've been building this spaceport it has always been connected to, to the people. The, uh, we believe that uh, uh, the advance that is being uh, made in the commercial space flight and, and uh, um, aerospace technology, first of all, has a, a direct impact in the people here on Earth, right? We all benefit from what is happening here. Now, what I anticipate 20 years from now, 25 years from now, you know, whenever uh, people see this, we'll, we'll see how real this, uh, this plan was and how you're going to have now people traveling from one point uh, on Earth to, to places far away at a fraction of the time that it takes today. I can see also economies of the world uh, having uh, aerospace as uh, a core uh, part of the, the, the business activities that everybody, I guess, conducts uh, day to day. And I can see people... People really hear people, uh, you know, uh, coming coming into the space wars and uh, uh, getting on on a spacecraft to go do a, a you know a day or a week or a month of work up in the moon or you know uh, taking t- taking a flight uh, you know somewhere in a space. I believe that this this is a very real possibility. I don't believe that uh, the human uh, the human being will will be contained. Uh, to Earth only, but we will continue to expand our horizons in the space. Wow. So, the Houston airport system has three airports, if I'm correct. It's Ellington Spaceport, Houston Hobby, and Bush Airport. Do you forecast that in the future, as the technology advances, the Hobby Airport and the Bush Airport will take the same steps as you did and converting those airports into spaceports? Or do you see more like this is going to be Houston spaceport only destination? I believe that geography is, a, is without a question, a very, very important part of uh, 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 spaceport infrastructure. In the case of Houston spaceport at Ellington, we are, uh, I guess, uh, in a great position. We're just 20 miles from the uh, coast uh, uh, of uh, the Gulf of Mexico, which allows us to to uh, operate in you know w- without disturbing uh, the um, the ecosystem under uh, you know under the the airspace that uh, other airports like Hobby or Bush have. Right. So what I believe is going to happen at the beginning as technology can, is developed, I believe that we will see for several years. We will see uh, people traveling to the Houston spaceport and then uh, connecting uh, through an unmanned system or, or you know, a drone uh, from here to Bush, and then you know, uh, in, for example, you know, fly from from Tokyo to to Houston spaceport. Here they they get on a, in a, an unmanned system, they land in Bush, and then in Bush they they get on their their flight to go to Oklahoma, right, Oklahoma City. Wow, um, this interview was has been very uh, well. I found, I found it interesting, fascinating, especially because I have been here for a while. But I really like I'm not the only one that we were aware of all of these amazing things happening right here in Houston. Um, Arturo, it has been a great interview. It, um, it's mesmerizing to just to learn about what is happening right here. But not only that, your vision, you you took a project from paper to get your license as a spaceport to have operations in space and you will be on the moon next 
next month, which has been fascinating. I have one final question for you. Uh, how complicated was the process to certify this airport as a spaceport? Well, it hasn't been easy. I have to say it, it has to, uh, to be, uh, you know, it has been a process that took a lot of determination. It took a lot of work, a lot of effort. It, it took also, of course, uh, you know, um, economic resources, right? But uh, the city of Houston, the Houston airport system has been committed since day, day zero. And I am, you know, I, I, I am so, I guess, thankful that I was uh, able to, to get started from day zero, right? And, and get to, to this point. It's been really a tremendous, tremendous honor for me and a pleasure to, to be able to do what we have done here. Uh, it, it is for me really, a, I, I guess, uh, so, so fascinating to see that uh, what used to be just, just an idea is now, you know, a, a very real development that, as I mentioned to you today, uh, it carries about $5 billion in contracts. It just, it has become a, a very, very important project, not just for Houston, not just for Texas, but for the entire country. The technology that is being developed here, the, the, the uh, resources, the, the, you know, the activity that is taking place at the Houston Spaceport is having an impact in the world. Uh, again, Axiom Space has flown astronauts uh, of the world to the space station. Uh, they have, uh, you know, they, they are a perfect example of what the Houston Space Board and, and the, uh, the United States is working uh, towards in the future. We will be opening access to space for years to come. And for me, it's nothing but a, an, an amazing, amazing uh, journey, uh, for which I'm very, very happy to be part of. Wow, that's great. So for people watching this, um, Arturo gave me a video. If you want to learn more about the uh, Houston Ellington Spaceport, at the end of this interview, uh, you will be able to watch a video about the vision of this fascinating facility. And Arturo, if they want to hear more, uh, I believe you have a website, which is uh, Houston. Uh, well, do you have a website? Right? Our website is fly to Houston Spaceport. Dot com and please uh, yeah please just uh, reach out to us uh, we are um, in in that expansion mode we have uh, a number of uh, activities and opportunities you know going on and it, it is uh, you know it is always uh, our our position to you know to uh, uh, work on on you know uh, expanding what we're doing here in this place great and so if people do you have companies interested to invest or learn more about the spaceport they just need to go to the website, which is going to be available here on the description below, and they can just go to the website and get more information. Is that right? Yeah, that is correct. Uh, all they have to do is reach out to us, and we will be more than, than glad to respond. And, and hopefully, like I said, we will be, you know, we will be able to, to uh, uh, work together in whatever, uh, you know, whatever activities that those uh, may have, right? Fascinating. Arturo, thank you so much again, and thank you so much for watching this uh, new episode of our holographic podcast or holocast, and see you next week. Thank you. Thank you for watching.